In this very special video, I'm going to show you absolutely everything I did to set up a Shopify store and take it from zero to one million in pretty much under one year using organic SEO and also a bit of email marketing as well. Now, one thing I will say is the email marketing part of this, I'm not going to be covering in this video. I'm not an email marketer. We have someone that does that, but basically just bombard people with as many emails as you can. But in order to get those in emails in the first place, we did use organic SEO. Now, first of all, I'm going to support my claim with evidence, which you may or may not be used to YouTubers doing that, but let's just do that. So this is the two men store Shopify. And you can see total sales in the last 30 days. And if I put this to 90 days, just to show a little bit more proof, you'll see 231,000 in 90 days. Now, I'm going to put this on 30 days. And you have to remember that this period of time is actually one of the worst for fashion sale sales, basically. So let's do 83,000 times 12. Oops, let's do 83,000 times 12. So it's pretty much bang on 1 million in a year. And we're almost guaranteed to do a million this year because I mean, our Black Friday will be three or four times what you can see here. So yeah, you can pretty much guarantee that we'll, we'll be at 1 million this year. So let's have a little look at the organic SEO. Uh, this is something that I'm particularly proud of because this is 100% my work. Nobody helped me with this except some backlinking from Craft. But I mean, we were already going to have this progress with or without the backlinks. It's just craft kind of sped things up a lot with their backlinking. But I still think all of this would have happened maybe in a year, regardless of having backlinks or not. It's just backlinks kind of make everything happen a little bit more quickly. So this is very, very low. This is not true. This is absolute bullshit. <laughs> we have way more traffic than this. Keywords, you know, it is what it is. That's just how um, it works. Let's show you that I do have more clicks than this. So this is saying we have 6.5 thousand in a month. If I go to the last 28 days on Search Console, you can see this is two men.it right here. We actually have 16,000 clicks. So people have people are always saying to me, oh, why are you lying? Blah, blah, blah. Like your traffic's not even that good. We actually have 16,000 clicks every single month, which is close to the 30,000 that iSuit gets. And this is a brand new website. So that's kind of all the evidence I'm going to be showing in this video. You can continue watching if you believe me. And if you don't believe me, honestly, just click off the video because uh, there's no point watching a video if you don't, if you don't believe me. Um, I've shown you all the proof that I should need to show you, to be quite honest with you. And let's just get into the actual process. So it's actually fairly simple. First thing you need to do is upload products to a Shopify store. This is actually really, really easy these days. Uh, you can use a CSV or you can use something if you want to do drop shipping, you can use something like inventory source. This is not sponsored, uh, but inventory source is pretty good for uh, drop shipping where you can just kind of import a load of products. Now, I would personally recommend, I'm going to add this to the side here, brands. So if you want to start selling today instead of in three years, then I would highly recommend looking at brands. So Something like Inventory Source, they do have um, suppliers that sell brands. So that could be a really, really good way to do it. Or you can, you know, buy some products and sell them. It really, really depends on what you what you want to do. If you're starting your own business, though, I don't want you to be too perturbed. But kind of the number one rule is the more products, the better. This is a general rule um for a shopify store now if you're doing sorry for an organic seo drop uh shopify store drop shipping or otherwise now if you're doing something like a drop shipping store and you just want to do a one store drop shipping thing organic seo is not really for you you're really going to be focusing on tiktok ads instagram ads that kind of thing but if you're trying to build for the future and you're trying to build like a multi-brand store then this video is definitely for you so the first thing you want to do is you want to upload your products. Now, I'm going to give you a really, really good cheat for this. So just go on Google, type in Shopify, upload CSV products, click on the first actual Shopify result. So not an ad. Uh, scroll down a little bit and look for a sample. So it's here. It says uh, 
If you have a CSV file that was exported from another store and came from the source, then verify that it matches the CSV file format. Click that link and then click download a sample CSV file and then view it like this. This should download like this. This will open in Visual Studio Code most likely. Um, so what all you have to really do is fill this in. If I import this to a Google Sheet just so people can see it a bit more clearly. Uh, so file. I think this is really good practice and I think people need to know about this. So I will just quickly go into a little bit of detail with this because this confused me for years and years. I'm about to give you some secret source that probably I shouldn't give away, but that's fine. I'm all about giving things away. So um, something something that confused me for years and stopped me from doing this process before is uh, image, image links. So if we go here to image SRC. Now, this is something that for a very, very long time completely confused me. But any link that you put here, regardless of where it's from, it will upload this image and it will become your own Shopify link. Now, what does this mean exactly? So if you look on a Shopify store, so let's just go on two men, okay? And let's just, I don't know, click on a random image. So this one here, this Brunello Cuccinelli. If I drag this across, or if I right click this and copy image address like this, and then I paste it, you'll see that this becomes a CDN Shopify link that is specific to two men. Any link that you put in this column will become your own Shopify link. So what does that mean? That means you can take images from anywhere across the web. You could use any link. So, I mean, you could make a, you could upload to Imgur, for example, and put the Imgur link here, and it will become a Shopify CDN link. Now that's super, super important because you don't want to use other people's images. You want other people's image links. You want your image links on your website. Another really useful tip here is that you can manipulate the CSV file using Python and ChatGPT and Claude or whatever very, very quickly, very, very easily to the point where you could have 10,000 unique product descriptions in 10 minutes if you know what you're doing. Now, this is all kind of, this is just the first part of this, but the more products you have and the more unique information that you have and the more images that you have, the better off you will be overall, okay? Google is gonna view you as a much, much better website if you have a lot of good imagery and a lot of unique seo so this is the first stage you need to upload your products i'm not going to go through finding suppliers things like that this is all secondary if you if you want to start a business you should be able to find suppliers you can't start a business without you know the fundamentals i'm just teaching you how to take those fundamentals and turn them into a million dollar business okay the next thing you want to do is you want to take all of your collections and separate, sorry, all of your products and separate them into collections. Now, you can do this in a number of different ways, but the best way to do it is actually to use tags. So inside the same CSV, you should use a GPT call to say something like, give me as many tags as possible that could be related to this product. So let's say this is a gray wool T-shirt, oh, kit on, let's just say for now, kit on T-shirt. So the tags here should be T-shirt, comma, wool uh, T-shirt, comma, uh, kit on T-shirt, kit on brand, gray T-shirt, gray top, I don't know, summer, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Each of these then becomes a different collection. So you have five collections for this one product. You can see how this will start to stack up very, very quickly. Another thing that you can do is if you don't want to use tags, you can use the title, okay? So if you have very descriptive and long titles, which I do recommend, if you look at uh, Two Men, for example, it has the brand, it has the color, it has the material, and then it has the object. This is something that I told them to do. Originally, it would just say it would have said Brunello Cuccinelli backpack, and that's it. When I first arrived at the company, I told them that you need to have more descriptive titles in order to do a little bit better with SEO. So we added the color, 
and the materials to the titles. These can then be used for collections as well. The more collections you have, the better off you will be. Don't think too carefully about this. Honestly, just make the collections. And another little tip, which I don't tell everybody this, but I really should, is that you don't have to put all of your collections in the header, okay? So a lot of people say, well, I mean, if you have 500 collections, where are you gonna put them all? What I do is I actually just kind of hide them. So for example, black sweaters does not appear at the top of two men. You won't be able to find this here, I don't think. So let's go clothing, sweaters, there's nothing here. So they're kind of just hiding on Google, if that makes sense. Now, what you do want to check though, and you, you want to be very, very careful with this, is that they are indexed. This is absolutely vital, okay? Now, this is where the next stage comes in. This is where the blog posts come in. This is probably the most important thing that you can do. So after you've collected all of this information, you upload the products, you make the collections, and then in order to get everything indexed, you have to create supporting blocks. Now, I am going to plug something here, guys. For the first time ever, I'm actually plugging. <laughs> if you go on incomestreamsurface.com slash register, and you want to get early access to the most powerful auto-blogging software in the world, well, it's not really an auto-blogger. We're, we're not going to let people automatically post because I don't think it's good for SEO. And I don't want people to get penalized like the, the recent helpful content update. So it's not quite an auto blogger. It's an SEO content generator. It is going to be very, very good for doing everything that I'm talking about in this video. However, you don't have to use my auto blogger. You can just use whatever you want. I always say auto blogger. It's not an auto blogger. Another thing you can do instead is you can actually just use Hura Collection Embedder with something like Claude. Um, in order to create content. But either way, the goal here is to create a lot of supporting blogs. Now, these blogs do not have to be massively complicated. They don't have to be, you know, 5,000 word masterpieces that people are obsessed with. What we do is we just do a very, very simple blog post. I'll show you right here. This is using the auto blogging system that we're going to be releasing very, very soon. This is just an article, you know, kit on uh, an overview of the best menswear brand in the world. And it just has a lot of really nice imagery and internal links to other parts of the website, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. This is how you should be doing it. Now, if you want to use the auto blogger, this is what your content will look like, or you can kind of prompt Claude and you can use Hura as well, like I said before, in order to get almost or very, very similar results to what the auto blogger will be doing. In terms of keyword research, I do two to three different things. I use keywordtool.io. I use Google Ads Keyword Planner. So with Google Ads Keyword Planner, I just put English, United States. I put a very broad keyword. I search for the very broad keyword and I just look for something interesting and I do a best of article. This is currently my best method. So I don't know. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, men's dress clothes. So I would do an article. That's actually a really good one that I haven't done. Best men's dress clothes 2024 and try and rank for this keyword. That's a really, really good way to do it. And then you just put all of the collections or all of the products that you've just uploaded inside the article. Another one, like I said before, keyword tool.io. You can put like best men's, for example, and then just hit enter and look for... Um, Look for some keyword suggestions. So yeah, we have best men's socks, best men's cologne would be a good one, best men's jeans, you know, all the classics. And then the final thing that I use is either ChatGPT or more recently Claude. What you can do is you can put your keyword research into there. Or another thing is you put your sitemap. So let's say you've already written 15 blogs or however many blogs we have on Two Men now. Uh, you can put that into ChatGPT. So I use something called Sitemap to Clipboard, which is a Chrome extension, which is here, in order to download my links. So I press Start here. I put that into ChatGPT and I say these 
uh, my blog posts? Can you give me 10 more ideas that are completely unique? I probably wouldn't use ChatGPT for this anymore. I'll show you why now. It's going to give me ones that aren't unique, almost definitely. Let's have a look. Okay, this one is actually fine. Yeah, this, that's actually good. Eco Luxury is bad because um, they, they don't sell eco. <laughs> Crocodile skin is not exactly eco. Oh, that's actually really good as well. From Sheep to Shop, the journey of a wool suit. I do like that. These are actually fine, to be fair. It's done a pretty good job. Uh, they're a little bit too broad for my liking. Let's see how Claude does in comparison. So let's say, can you give me 10 unique ideas for blog posts? These are my current blog posts. Kind of both of them always make the mistake of doing things that are slightly too broad for my liking. Um, but we do use ChatGPT to do some of our keyword research. Yeah, it's the same thing. This one here, the Art of Spetsadura, is a very, very, very good one. Good job, Claude. This is a 10 out of 10 right here. This is also a 10 out of 10, the Italian streetwear. This is a 10 out of 10. Claude has actually done, Claude's done a much better job. Um, still, some of these are completely useless, but it's got more 10 out of 10 ones than ChatGPT. And then the final stage of this is translate everything. Only at this point should you translate, okay? You should not be translating before you've done, um, until you've got 500 products, 300 collections, and 50 to 100 blogs. That is the only time that you should be translating content, okay? You should not be translating when you have a brand new website. It doesn't make sense. Once you've got all of that content, then you can use eTranslate. And again, I'm going to give you a tip that I haven't talked about before. Uh, Shopify plugin. So it's this one here, eTranslate Shopify plugin. I should say two men, whatever. Okay. What you need to know about this app, and if you've watched all the way to the end of this video, I'm about to give you some gold, is do not translate 20 languages at the same time because you will have too many words on your store to do that. What you should do instead is you should translate one language or two languages or three languages every month and, and fully translate those languages. Do not translate all of them at once, okay? The reason is, is that you have a maximum of 30,000 words. If you go over that, then you start getting charged and it just doesn't make sense. So the best way to do it is to choose the languages that are most relevant to your store Normally, I would recommend something like Spanish, French, Russian, Chinese, the really, really widely spoken languages, because I only care about line go up. I don't really care about anything else. I'm an SEO. I don't care about politics. I don't care about blah, blah, blah. I just care about line goes up. Now, you might be a bit more picky. You might not want to sell in Russia. You might not be able to sell in China. You might not be able to sell in Russia, whatever. That's all you know unique to each different business in which case what you should do is choose spanish and french for example and translate the entire store into those two languages honestly guys that is all i did then as an aside you do need to spam the crap out of your customers if somebody signs up to your email list you have to send them three emails a week, four emails a week, five emails a week. You've got to spam the crap out of them. Every time you have a sale, every time you have a discount code, whatever it might be, you need to spam them. Every time you have a new product, send it to them. You need to tell them that you exist. You need to be constantly interacting with them. Now, if people want, I can get Rowan or someone to do a video on email marketing specifically. I'm not an expert, but I know that our our email guy spams the crap out of people and it does work. However, to get the original signups and everything like that, all we did was everything that you can see on this list. There's nothing special. There's nothing hidden. It's just grinding and working and getting those pages live and getting them indexed and then getting ranked. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content and peace out. P.S. If you watched all the way to the end, 20 minutes in, what are you doing? Go outside. It's probably a nice day. Peace out.